Right, hello everyone, this is Sungyuk Kim. So today we will uh, finish the um, lecture of the form, the neural network and backpropagation. So based on, based on the what we've done so far, so we discussed how to train, how to train your model, one layer neural network case. All right, let's get started. Hello everyone, this is Sungyuk Kim. So this is lecture number four. So we, today we will see uh, how to derive the loss gradient in neural network and we will see the few examples how to train your neural network. So, uh, in practice, we consider the one layer neural network with the MS regression loss, right? So, it consists of the input layer and which was the 3 by 1 vector and output layer 4 by 1 vector. <clears throat> And this single uh, MLP, one layer neural network, is just a linear projection, which was the chart is equal to Wx plus b, and activation function as a sigma d function, p is equal to 1 over 1 plus exponential minus g, and loss function was msc, so l is equal to uh, square of the y minus p. So this is notation. First of all, we uh, we draw the computation graph in this case, so there are three kinds of functions, right? So linear projection function or linear transformation function, second is a sigma function, and third one is MST loss, right? And after that, in the backpropagation step, by backpropagating the loss gradient, I mean the upgrade, upstream gradient to the downstream gradient, uh, by using a local gradient, we can uh, backpropagate the loss gradient from the uh, loss layer to the input layer. The question is how to compute the local gradient for each uh, function, in this case, uh, linear transformation sigmoid function and MSC loss. So, we also, we first of all, we discussed the uh, local gradient for the, this linear, uh, linear transform case. So, in this case, uh, local, uh, local gradient G over WJ was defined like this, which is in R D by M space. And G over P was the just identity matrix, so identity matrix, which is in M by M matrix. The local gradient for the sigma function was defined like this: the gradient of the G of Z over Z. I mean, the, in terms of the Z, is going to be a diagonal term of the one minus G of Z i times G uh, Z i, which means. The one minus z, uh, one minus g z, uh, g z one times g z one, and one minus g z two times g z two, only look, uh, only located in diagonal term, while the optimal term is zero. So this is the local gradient for the sigma d function, right? Then finally we get a local gradient, then we can easily propagate the loss gradient. Uh, like this. So, first of all, our loss was y minus p square, right? Then, first of all, first of all, loss gradient in with respect to the p is a two p minus y, just two p minus y. Right? Local gradient of uh, loss gradient with respect to p equals to two times p minus y. So. This one, good job. This one, and then left, uh, next one is L loss gradient with respect to Z is equal to local gradient and uh, loss gradient with respect to P. We already know that times local gradient P over G, P over G. So P over G was like this, good job. This is a local gradient for the uh, sigma d function. So P over G. So this was like this, good job, diagonal term of 1 minus g z i times g z i time optimal gradient, good job. Let's write that, up, grad, up gradient, uh, local gradient, and thousand gradient, good job. Thousand gradient. Of course, this one, I mean the loss gradient with respect to Z is in Rm by one space, which is same size of 
same size of the chat. 그렇죠? Matrix chat. And we are also interested in local loss grading with respect to the at W. But here is some problem. W is just M by T, 그렇죠? Which was the matrix, 그쵸? which was matrix. Even though L is just a uh, scalar value, right? So matrix scalar, 그쵸? matrix scalar. But when we go back to the definition of the Jacobian, we did not discuss matrix scalar, 그쵸? even though we discussed the vector to scalar, right? So in this case, we use some trick we or you, we decompose this loss gradient as a sum of I mean the uh, set set of the vector set of the vector like this. So we already know our matrix W consisting of W one transpose W two transpose W M transpose. Each W is uh, what's that D by one vector, right? D by one vector. Right? So, based on this, we decompose L over W, matrix W, as a L over W1 vector, L over W2 vector, L over WM vector, transport. Based on this definition, right? Then, because this one is, W1 is the D by 1 vector, then this is just like vector to scalar case, good job. Vector to scalar case. Vector to scalar case. We already know this one, good job. Where? Here, good job. Ah, sorry. This is a local gradient, good job. Local gradient to go. Uh, here, we need to consider this one. This one is going to be. Uh, Z over W1 times L over Z. 그쵸? This is off-sync gradient. We already know this one. 그쵸? And this is a local gradient. 그쵸? As we discuss here. 그쵸? So by multiplying these two terms, this one is going to be uh, first component of the L over uh, L over G times X, L over G times X. So, please focusing here. Here is only uh, non zero vector in J in X, so it's going to be uh, this one. 그쵸? Similarly, L over W2 is going to be like this, L over WM is like this. 그쵸? Then, finally, by uh, factorizing, I mean the uh, by considering the same x as uh, another vector, our final value, I mean final uh, final matrix, it's going to be the L over Z times x transpose. X transpose. So this is in our m by d space. M by d space. This is a way to compute the matrix to scalar uh, derivation. Similarly. L over B, P uh, was in M by 1 space, 그쵸? Then, uh, low of sync gradient from here, uh, oh, sorry, of sync gradient from here, and local gradient, then, because the local gradient is just identity matrix, then this one, which is going to be L over, uh, L over Z itself, right? So, we finally achieve L over W, matrix W, and L over uh, bias P. Then we finally use the gradient descent algorithm. Tion descent algorithm to find out optimal hyperparameter W star and P star. Then, finally, we train this one-layer neural network with MS elevation loss. So, that's it.
that's very, very interesting. Uh, very, very uh, simple and straightforward. Then, way to train your neural network. Right? Uh, right. So, if you follow what I've done so far easily, you can, you can directly extend what I've done, those, what, what I've done so far to the two layer neural network case with the MS3 regression loss. This is very, very simple. X is input layer, Y is output layer, but from now on, we consider four kinds of novel parameter, W1, P1, W2, P2. Then the question is, what is the loss gradient with respect to W1 or P1, W2, P2? Then finally, we train the, this neural network, two-layer neural network, then we find the optimal parameter W1, P1, W2, P2. So how can you do that? First of all, let's represent this neural network in a computation graph like this. Input, linear fraction, sigma d function, another input, ah, sorry, another linear fraction, sigma d function, and finally, loss graph, loss gradient, right? This is exactly, uh, not exactly, but this is uh, similar to the previous example, one layer neural network. So, please, to in yourself, this is going to be the homework. You have to submit this homework to the Blackboard website. The, I will let you know due date soon, but this is homework. So please do in yourself based on this formulation, okay? So this is the derivative of the neural network, okay? Right. So now let's go back. Uh, let's continue the next topic. Okay, let's go back to the our overview, I mean the image classification, right? So, problem setting was like that. We have a train data, X and Y, X source image, like this, like this, and Y, in this case, the uh, class label, cat or non-cat or the uh, cat among the several kinds of class label, for example, cat, dog, sheep, like this. Then, so far we discussed the deep neural network as our Mapping function or more complex mapping function, right? <clears throat> then there are three kinds of things. There are three kinds of things. So in here, we just assume that MS3 regression loss. But in classification or other task, maybe we have to define proper loss function. So this is uh, another issue: how to define your loss function, right? The second is Training strategy, for example, like gradient update, of gradient update, gradient update, like a gradient descent algorithm, right? The third one is how to compute the gra gradient. Good job. Uh, uh, we already talked about how to compute the gradient, good job, by using the computational graph and back propagation. And let's talk about further how to define the loss function and training strategy, good job, to solve the more complex problem. So. For the image classification, from now on, we talk about more specific task image classification. Image classification. Uh, in your first homework, I mean, the, in your first project, we will we will train a neural uh, neural network, simple neural network for the uh, SciPad ten dataset. Cypatent data set. This is your first uh, project. Uh, we, will we will implement neural network to solve this image classification on Cypatent data set by using the Python, this, which we will, uh, we will explain how to do this. Anyway, so this Cypatent data set is one of the most popularly used image classification data set. It consists of, thing of the 10 classes, for example, airplane, automobile, bird, Cat, deer, 그쵸? 이런 식으로. Dog, frog, horse, sheep, trunk. Like this, 그쵸? Uh, each image, each image consisting of 32 by 32 by 3. So, single image, each it's just like the tensor, tensor. 32 by 32 by 3, 
It means that which is seen, I mean the, let's say this is input, xn is seen, 32 by 32 by 3. Good job. And in this data set, there was uh, uh, 50,000 training images and 10,000 testing images. Then in this setting, we will train our neural network to classify your image as uh, 10 kinds of classes. So this is our, pro uh, our problem setting. First of all, let's talk about uh, simple linear classifier or, or uh, linear logic regression classifier that we discussed in lecture number two. Then let's talk about how to do this by using the simple linear classifier. Right. So our input xn consists of the 32 by 32 by 3. By reshape this tensor to the 1D vector, it's going to be the 3072 number total. So I mean, your x is going to be the 3072 times 1 vector, right? by reshaping the original image, uh, low images. Right? To solve this one using simple linear classifier with a parameter w, uh, because our final output sh should be 10 by 1, right? 10 by, because we consider the 10 kinds of uh, class label. So your uh, Learnable parameter W is 10 by 3072 and bias is going to be 10 by 1. So let's just imagine. Right? Then your mapping function can generate the 10 numbers giving class score. Class score. Then let's talk about how to how to train WMP. Then how to find the optimal parameter WMP in the case of simple linear classifier. Okay. To, uh, to simplify the problem, let's consider, let's suppose that an image consisting of the 4 pixel, not a 32 by 32 pixel, with a 3 channel, but let's just suppose that image with a three, uh, 4 pixel. Gotcha. So, for example, 2 by 2 by 1 with 3 classes, in this case, cat, dog, sheep, then let's think this mapping function, fwxn equals to wxn plus b. So this is image, I mean the this is xn. Gotcha? When we reshape this xn like this, gotcha? in 4 by 1 space, uh, our w, w, uh, w1. Let's write again. W1 transport, W2 transport, W3 transport. This is W1 transport, right? And W1 transport times X plus bias, good job. This is bias, which is in three by one space. Then each generate one proba uh, one, how to say, output. Let's say this is a cat score, and with another W and P, we estimate the dog score, and we consider another W and P, we can estimate the sheep score for the given this input image. Gotcha? In other words, your mapping function FWXN generate the uh, three by one vector output. Gotcha? Three by one vector output. Right, right. Let's talk about phenomena of this one. What kinds of uh, learned parameter W should be? So, as we discussed so far, if we consider the input image 2x2 two two, like this, your learned parameter W1, let's say, okay, let's say W1 transpose, W2 transpose, W3 transpose, by reshape this to bubble one, bubble two, bubble three as an image, original image size, uh, three kinds of W will be looks like this. Okay. So, similarly, uh, so this W, one, two, three, is the decision boundary. Define the decision boundary, good job. As we discussed in logic regression, 
그쵸? 로맨스 트레인 This is going to be the decision boundary, right? Then, when we train your neuron, uh, your linear classifier given this 10 class classification problem you learn the tra uh, learn parameter, in this case uh, W1, W2, W3, blah blah blah, blah W10 because in this case, uh, we consider the 10 class label your load parameter after training will be looks like this. So, interestingly, as you can see here, this load parameter contain some kinds of uh, shape for the uh, each class label. For example, like dog, for example, like frog, for example, like horse. So, each is each. The 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 the, the land parameter for the horse class is looks like hole holes right or a frog a um, frog or the dog right and from here we can just see the this land parameter contain some structure shape to classify each image as each class anyway. This land parameter and this land hyperparameter, uh, sorry, parameter W1, W2, W3 can be the decision boundary. So when we're interpreting this linear classifier, right? So if we just consider, assume image can be represented by the 2D space or the arbitrary space, right? uh, let's say uh, 3072 uh, space, because but, but we, we can draw this one. Right, but if we just assume this is, uh, if we can let I mean, if we can represent um, each image is in the two D space, it will be some point. Gotcha? Then your land boundary, let's say W one, W two, or W three, it's going to be the linear classifier decision boundary. Right. That we discussed the multi class classifier on the logic regression, right? Then you can just do the multi class classification problem, gotcha? like this. This is linear classifier case, gotcha? linear classifier case. Uh, but, but we want to make a more complex mapping function, larger than linear classifier, simple linear classifier. Right? Then we need more uh, general way to train such a complex model like a neural network. So from now on, let's talk about how to do this. How to do this. Anyway, uh, people then, people then. Anyway, so your linear classifier. I mean the long linear classifier can generate 10 by 1 vector output 10 by 1 vector output given input xn for each xn then this output by considering the output you can just say that okay so this image is will be the cat or the automobile or the frog like this So, the question is, how can you tell whether this W is good or bad? So, this is related to the loss function and optimization we discussed in the learning theory, right? So, the question is, how to define the general loss function for the multi-class classifier case, right? So, anyway, in linear regression case, or the regression case, your MSA loss function was defined like this, right? And in two class classification case, for example, like the logic regression case, uh, your loss function was defined like this. When your mapping function fwxn was defined like 1 over 1 plus exponential minus wxn, right? For the two class classification case. And we already talked about this one. Output of the mapping function output of the mapping function can be considered as a probability. 
probability. 그렇죠? And yn is the class label. In this case, 0, 1, 1. 0, 1. 그렇죠? 0, 1. Then, if there's a way to extend this. Right, let's continue. Anyway, we, in logic regression, we already discussed the output of, prob uh, output of uh, mapping function can be considered as a probability, right? And yn was 1 or 0 or 1, right? Then let's extend this one as a general multi class classification, right? So, here we want to define multi-class classification loss function. So, for example, like the log likelihood, or just called the error loss, error loss. What does it mean? So, let's generalize this one as a multi-class classification case. Then, your loss function, is going to be the negative one over large n, and sum of the log pn, yn where p and y n is probability probability for the uh hence image and images with ground truth ground truth class y n if there's way to represent, I mean, measure the pn, yn, then your loss function can be like this. So, so here, like this. pn, where the uh, vector pn consists of pn1, pn2, pnc, for the, uh, in this case, c class, so the number of class, And because of this is a probability, so it's assumed to be the normalized, let's say the uh, sum of the pn. I mean the length of pn, so, so in this case, sum of the pn is just one. Good job. So length of, ah, sorry, length of the pn. Good job. Length of pn, so just one. I mean the uh, uh, ah, sorry, but so, sum of the pn, good job. Sum of the pn was one because this is probability. And yn is a class level for the nth images. Ground truth class label. Ground truth class label. Then this loss function can be the generalized version of the, this one. This one by considering the multiple class. So what does it mean? What does it mean? What happened? So, Let's go back to 10 class classification problem. So let's suppose that your uh, mapping function, let's say fwxn, generate the 10 by 1 vector. So let's say that output of the 10 by 1 vector, let's say it looks like this. Then if you know ground truth, yn, let's say yn is here. For example, like the 4, 4, in this case 4, from the 1, 2, 3, 4, 5, 6, 7, 8, 8, 10, then what I want to do is, ah, let's write again. What I want to do is, here is the, uh, what? So, vector, vector, let's say the vector y, consisting of the 1, for the uh, y n, and zero otherwise. So y n, if y n is equal to four, just the fourth index uh, one remain things are zero, right? Then what we want to do is we want to make uh, our mapping output is resemble to the this one. Kuchu? Then Thus, this loss function, this loss function can make increase probability for the uh, yn uh, yn index while reducing the probability for uh, for the other case to 
vision of ground truth. Then, this low signal to train your mapping function with parameter w. That's the multi-class classifier loss. So this is called the log likelihood. Log likelihood. Uh, right. If we consider large n is equal to two. It's just, it's going to be the just, uh, logic regression. Regression loss. In this case here. This, but this is the general version of the, uh, multi class regression loss. Good job. Then, the question is, how to define this one? I mean, the, how to estimate the probability for the nth images with the current truth class label yn. So this is the, uh, this is our goal. Then, so, in other words, we want to interpret, we want to interpret low classifier score, let's say, FWXN, as a probability, probability, like a P, PN, to use low likelihood. Good job. Low likelihood for the multi-class class is a problem, right? So let's talk about how to do this. So, so first of all, you have an image X and and your mapping function generate the, this output. Good job. Uh, by formulating the some kinds of neural network, you can generate output. Let's say chat and which is the three by one case because we consider the three class label. Sure. But still, uh, but these three values are not probability yet. Good job. Then let's make a, this one as a probability. How to do that? First of all, let's use exponential term. Exponential term. Why? To make a probability must be larger or equals to zero. So, so that just take a exponential term like a, this one, exponential three comma two. Then we achieve these values. So, for a moment, we'll just say that this is an unnormalized probability. So, and then because this is a probability, uh, it should be normalized because the e probability must sum to one. Then just normalize. Divide by some of the this value. I mean, over twenty four comma five plus zero point zero point one eight. Then it's going to be the one point thirty two, one point eighty two, one point zero zero, which one point zero zero. Then this one. It's going to be probability for the accent consisting of p n comma one p n comma two p n comma three in this case zero comma thirteen zero comma zero point zero point eight seven zero point zero zero maybe there are some value anyway okay so then Ah, so that's it. So, in general, this kind of process from here to here can be represented by this one. P and comma K, probability Y is equal to K, given X is equal to Xn, it's going to be the exponential. Exponential and normalization. Then define like this. Good job. Exponential y. Okay. Good job. Exponential of each output of the uh, of the your model. Then normalize by the sum. Good job. Then this function is called softmax function.
This is the definition of the softness function. So, softness function. Then, then, now we have a probability. Then, let's use the log like here. So, as we discussed here, then you can train your model to class to solve the multi-class classifier. Good job. Classifier, right? Compare. Good job. With the low likely loss, low likelihood loss. Good job. So finally, ah, good job. Compare. Good job. How? Minus log p n y n. Good job. Log p n y n. Minus log p y n x n. So in other words, uh, loss equals to one over large n and sum of the uh, large p n y n where n is equal to one to the uh, large n, large n. Then, because we already know p n is defined like this, our final output is going to be like this. Ah, here. It's not okay. It's a n, y n, so z n y n, the y n. That's it. In other words, to train your uh, multi-class class fire classification mapping function, I'm the mapping function. Uh, on the output of the mapping function, let's say z n k, we apply the softmax, so softmax function, and use a low error loss, low likelihood loss, then by minimizing this loss, you can just train the better W. This is the uh, uh, loss function for the multi classifier. So to sum up, softmax loss or low likelihood loss is often called softmax classifier. So in deep learning era, I mean the neural network, uh, for the regression problem, MSE or MAE are uh, very, very popular used, right? But in classification problem, we have, uh, in many cases, we have to consider the multi-class classification case, then this soft classifier, soft classifier, one of the popular used uh, method, loss function to train multi-class classifier. So that's the loss function for the multi-class classifier, right? Then, let's talk about how to train your network with softness classifier. Now the MSC loss, as we discussed here, it was the only neural network with MSC loss, but from here, let's talk about how to train your one layer neural network with a softmax classifier. But, but, because we have a computation graph and back propagation step, even though we consider the different loss function, we can do back propagate similarly to what we've done in the previous example. So that's the beauty of the back propagation. Okay, okay, let's do that. Let's do that. So, first of all, we already know one layer neural network consists of the uh, WMP and consists of linear projection, which is activation fun. Ah, sorry. So, in this case, activation function is not a sigmoid, but softmax to, to solve the multiple classification problem, right? And loss function was at, at a loss, which this is error loss we discussed so far, and associated parameter and the uh, how to say the vector was x, which is t by one space w consists of w one transport w two transport w m transport and vector p and y. Uh, y is just vector in uh, c by one space c by one space. If, for example, if one is equal to two, I mean the ground truss label is two among the C kinds of class, let's say 10, C is equal to 10, then uh, 
Then your y, your y, vector y, consisting of the 0, 1, 0, 0, 0, 0. This vector define to after the shake of notation. So anyway, similar to the regression problem, we draw the computation graph first, right? So x in t by e one space, w in m by t, p in m by one, output is that after softmax, output is going to be p, which is still m by one space, and multiply error loss with ground truth y, so which is in m by one space. Okay, we have a four module. I mean the function. Then, whatever to know that, whatever done. First compute loss gradient with okay, so output loss loss and loss gradient with lead to the p, uh, loss gradient with respect to the z, and loss gradient with respect to w, loss gradient with respect to p. Then it can be used to. Uh, find the optimal parameter W and B. The question is local gradient. Local gradient for each function. So if we can find out the local gradient for the each function, then you can just back propagate. Then solve the network, so, I mean, train the network. Right, so, first of all, we already discussed how to backpropagate across the linear tra linear trans linear fraction block here, right? Then, here, let's talk about local gradient for the softmax class and error loss. Then, we can do backpropagation even with the deprod class fire, let's say, softmax class fire, okay? Right, let's do that. So let's talk about local gradient for this open function. Define like this. Right? Define like this. In other words, this is the softmax function. Define like this. Where z is a score, a score z1, z2, and zm. And, and probability is going to the p. We, as we discussed in previous slides, good job. slide p1, p2, pm transport, and this one, sigma g is a, just some of the exponentials at z i, z j, good job. Uh, this one, good job. so this is just the definition of the softmax function. Good job. Then, what you want to do is gradient with respect to the z. Local gradient. So, local gradient. So, uh, because P is in M by 1 space, Z is in M by 1 space as well, your this matrix can be P1 over Z1, P2 over uh, sorry, P1 over Z2, P1 over Z, M, P2 over Z1, P2 over Z2, like this, which is in M by M space. Right? Then, if we can find out this derivation, we can easily Backpropagate across the neural network. So let's also assume that for the shake of notation, let's say this is a T11. Let's define this is T11, this is T12, and this is TAB, one of the elements. Uh, for example, this one P1, Z1, 
Z2. It's going to be the Sigma Z2 with exponential Z1 over exponential Z1 plus exponential Z2 plus exponential ZM. Right? This is just the definition of the softmax function, right? Then you can finally achieve some equation. Right? Similarly, you can compute up T11, T12, or TAB. Then finally you're you're going to achieve this general definition. For short, PAB, TAB, I mean the A comma B element can be P A times delta A B minus P B, where delta A B is equal to one if A is equal to B. I'm a diagonal term, diagonal term, while zero, otherwise zero. So that is the local plane for the softmax. Please try to yourself. So this is homework. This is also homework. You have to know that how to do this. Why to design your on your neural network for the multi-class classification problem, the, which is going to be your first project. So you have to do this by hand, 그렇죠? 그래서 이것도 홈워크예요. 그래서 여러분들이 내가 지금 이렇게 해서 이제 이거를 각각 풀어보면 될 거예요, 요거. 그럼 각각이 나오겠죠? 그래서 이게 정말 이렇게 되는지 한번 체크를 해보길 바래요. 우리 넘어갈게요, 알겠죠? Then one more thing is the local gradient for the log likelihood loss where defined. Like this, 그렇죠? L is equal to negative log P Y N, 그렇죠? P Y N, P L L loss, oh, with Y N and L, 그렇죠? Where P is a probability, 그렇죠? A wise class label, 그렇죠? Then loss gradient respect to P, I'm the input. It's a local gradient, 그렇죠? Local gradient. Then it can be easily defined like this. How? L over P1. It's just one. And L over Pn. P Yn. Just one over Pyn. And other term is also zero. Let's say, uh, for example, P uh, M is going to be zero. By the definition, then your local gradient for the log likelihood it's going to be the negative zero 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 one over P Y N for the Y N index, and also zero. Otherwise. Then you can just derive your neural network. I mean, you can just train one layer neural network with a software classifier. So let's do that. First of all, loss gradient with respect to the p, where p is equal to m by one. What's defined like this? Good job. Good job. And error over that, the input of the softmax. It's going to be the p over z times l over p. 그쵸? We already know l over p here as a obscene gradient, and we only interested in this one. 그쵸? Local gradient for the softness function, right? And by this term, 그쵸? obscene gradient, and this term, local gradient, output, it's going to be like this. 그쵸? Then by Simply some rewrite this one, reformulate, we can easily write p minus y. This is very, very important. This is very, very important. Why? Even though your first propagation requires some kinds of exponential or other uh, complex values, but when back propagating, I mean, the when we compute L minus L, L over z, we just compute this loss gradient by only considering the p minus y. p is a vector, y is a vector, 그렇죠? 단순히 vector 빼기로 이제 보여지기 때문인 거죠, 그렇죠? 
Then after that, a over W. A over W can be just like this. A over B is like this. How? We already discussed this one in the linear uh, MSE function case, right? The rule of the, this one is exactly the same. The main difference is the opting gradient. Opting gradient, right? That means even though we consider the different class phi or the loss function, the back propane step is going to be exactly the same for the uh, another part, 그렇죠? 그래서 이제 정리해 보면. 소프트웨어 클래스 파이어가 뭐 바뀌든 어쩌 상관없이 그 새로 생긴 모델들에 대한 팩프로 해오면 그래서 이제 이 여기까지 도달하는 순간 이걸 알면 사실 여기가 뭔 일인지 아무 상관이 없고 우리는 그냥 요거만 계산하면 되는데 이게 그냥 MSL랑 똑같은 거죠 우리가 뭐 소프트웨어 클래스 파이어인지 뭔지 상관없이 그렇죠? 그렇기 때문에 이렇게 쉽게 할수 있다. 지금 뭐예요? 마지막에 이걸 가지고 이제 train 그렇죠? I mean using the gradient design 그렇죠? 그렇죠? 할수 있다. 쉽죠? Right? Then you can do two layer neural net for the soft test class fire again. 그쵸? Soft test class fire again. This is your another homework. So you have to submit this homework by hand to the Blackboard website. Okay? We will let you know soon. Anyway, so this is the comparing the gradient within the neural network. 그쵸? All right. Anyway, we so far we discuss uh, how to compute the loss gradient, 그쵸? with the computation graph and back propagation, computation graph and back propagation. To sum up, to so, to optimize your net your your neural network with the gradient design algorithm, we define the loss function and optimization and iterate it, iterate. In team learning era, uh, through the training set, I mean the whole training sample from n is equal to 1 to the large n. And when we repeat uh, whole training set one time, we just call this one as a one epoch pass through the whole training set. Then, but because we, we are interested in the iteration, so we just n epoch, we just consider n epoch, n iteration to Optimize, I mean, the, to update your parameter W. Okay? So, this is a gradient design algorithm to train your neural network. But, here are some problem. This kind of uh, first, first way has some problem. First one is for some, okay? because the, this loss function was consisting of the sum of when is equal to 1 to the large n, okay? blah blah blah. blah. Okay? When m is equal to large, in, in team learning case, we have to consider the large and larger and larger training data, 그쵸? as we discuss why now, 그쵸? so it could join to probability, uh, probable, uh, probab, probab, uh, probabilistic, 그쵸? probabilistic. So, so in team learning era, we just approximate some using the mini batch concept of the example 32, 64, 128. So what does it mean? So let's suppose that you have a training data, I mean the M kinds of training sample, but rather than considering the whole training sample, uh, 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 how to say, as a whole, by just dividing this training set as a subset, I mean the, in this case, the mini batch, Or, or just patchy. We update, we update, we update the parameter w for each mini batch, not a whole whole uh, whole data. So the number of mini batch, I mean the samples, number of samples in the mini batch. Let's say, for example, thirty two or sixty four. Blah blah blah. Anyway, so this is a mini batch case. Why? Uh, anyway, so to overcome this limitation, uh, we consider the one more iteration for each training batches uh, for the uh, 
uh, one batch calcium to X P and Y P X P and Y P uh, from P is equal to one to the large P. Let's say P is equal to thirty two, or for example, then update your uh, W parameter for the this mini batch. So, so let's suppose that let's suppose that you have a training. Uh, let's say large n is equal to 1024 and you you consider ah this n is not uh, not the same n let's say this is n prime right? and let's suppose that you consider the 500 apple 500 apple right? then your update rule I mean the w is just updated 500 times right? but when you consider the mini batch concept, your mini batch, uh, if you have the 1024, your number of mini batch is going to be, 얼마요? 32, 그쵸? Then, your update, let's say, because M prime was a 500, and number of mini batch was 30, 아, 좀 헷갈릴 수도 있겠다, 이거를. Uh, sorry, not a 1014, let's say, Five, five hundred. Uh, five hundred twelve. 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 You can reduce the sum of the expanded sum, 그쵸? by approximating the mini batch, and update more compared to the original gradient descent. 그쵸? This one is called the stochastic gradient descent or mini batch gradient descent. Gradient descent. In other words, when is more accurate estimation of the gradient and mini batch leads to the best fast training, can penalize computation and significant speed increase on the CP, uh, GPU because we don't need to consider the whole number of training samples. Gotcha? So when we draw the path, I mean the optimization path starting from the here, gradient descent algorithm follow the path like this, but square gradient descent algorithm may be noise because we just come consider the mini batch, randomly sample the mini batch, but by updating the more, I'd say, in this case, the 60 times, we can improve the probability of global convergence compared to the gradient descent algorithm. So this is the stochastic gradient descent algorithm. We'll talk about this all more in the training the neural network, okay? Or optimizing the neural network, okay? So, anyway, there are so many advanced optimizers, for example, like Ada Momentum, Ada Grass, something like this. We'll talk about this in a later chapter, but for details, you can check the another slide. But yeah, today we just just briefly mentioned the concept of the stochastic gradient descent. Okay, so that's it. So, this is the end of the today's lecture, and this is the end of the lecture to fall. Uh, thank you very much. Please remember there is the two. Uh, there was a two kinds of uh, derivation homework to learn I and mean, to compute the loss gradient in your two-layer neural network. So please try to derive yourself. So it's very, very important, important, which is related to your first project. Okay? 자 여러분 이제 여기까지 뉴런 네트워크 다 끝났고 이제 여러분들 오늘 제가 얘기했던 것 중에 몇 가지 숙제가 있었죠. 실제 여러분들 해봐라. 내가 하는 걸로 보면 절대 못 푼다. 여러분 꼭 해보아야 되고 아마 중간고사 그리고 여러분들의 그 퍼스트 프로젝트를 풀려면 이걸 손으로 할줄 알아야 돼요 알겠죠? 그래서 꼭 해주길 바라고 우린 다음 시간에 뵙겠습니다 알겠죠? 여러분 수고하셨습니다